So let's let's look on forward to to the channels, right? So channels is how a company communicates with and reaches its customer to deliver the value proposition. So this is how you will be selling or distributing your product or service. And so um, you got to think about through which channels do your customer segments want to be reached? That's a question that you need to ask yourself. Uh, which one works best? Which one is more cost efficient? And where are your customers? Uh, understanding how to reach your customers is extremely crucial for your business. Yeah. It's, go ahead, Rafael. No, no, I, I, I just said yes, but, but I, um, this is, this is critical right here. Um, because you can always identify the, the customer segment. You may think, or you may have a good value proposition, but how do you sell it? Right. How do you, take it to them? How do you make it in a way that is efficient and is scalable, right? Do you see yourself knocking door by door trying to sell a product or do you see yourself finding a channel that can move that product or service for you, such as your website, uh, such as apps, uh, such as strategic partners, right? So I want you guys to think about channels uh, because they're critical. They're critical to and they'll dictate how much you're going to scale or how can you, or if you're going to be able to scale or not. And perhaps you want to be a mom and pop shop and that's okay. But in this DNH, you need a solid website, right? And you need some SEO. So those are channels, all right? Invest money in channels and, and do your homework in channels. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so the next, the next box is the customer relationships. So this is, this is basically the, this describes the types of relationships a company establishes with each, each specific customer. Um, so this is driven by the following kind of motivations that you can think about. So this, your customer acquisition, your customer retention, uh, boosting sales and upselling. So think about it this way. How do I get, keep and grow my customers? That's what your customer relationships uh, tab should look like. And it's a two-sided funnel, right? Where you, you first focus on how do you get your customer? Then the, the funnel gets smaller and how do you keep that customer? And then the funnel could get bigger again and how you grow that customer. How do you keep them coming back? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really helpful in this step to create a user journey map of your customer and how they interact with your business. And so some of the questions that you can ask in this step is uh, what type of relationship does each customer segment expect to establish and maintain with them? Uh, which ones have you established already if you, if you already have an existing business? How costly are they? How much does it cost to acquire customers? Uh, this helps clarify the points of engagement between you and your customer and the modes used to relate to your customers. Yeah, I, I, I always like to to use the sample of Winn-Dixie or, or American Express, right? Um, I, when I do go to Winn-Dixie and they ask me for my phone number, I know that I am automatically gonna be saving a chunk of money. Or when I use my Amex, right, I'm gonna be getting points. Um, so those are loyalty programs that are examples of, of customer relationship. How do you keep, keep that customer engaged with your company or continue to use the services or product uh, so that's something to think about. And it could be as simple as a discount, right? Um, if you if you buy from me so much, you'll get this discount or if or, or we have a holiday special every year. So it can be something as simple as that. But as long as you have something that that is helping you to keep that customer engaged with you, then then that's a great starting point. Absolutely. So, again, focus on how do you get, how do you keep and how do you grow your customer? If you focus on those three areas, you'll have a solid uh, customer relationship uh, box. So moving on to the next box, one of the most important ones as well. I feel like I'm saying when they're all critically important, but uh, obviously revenue streams, right? This, is, this represents the cash a company generates from each customer segment. So how do you make money? How does your business model make money? And so uh, there are two types typically. Uh, generally speaking anyway. So there's the transactional type. That's typically the, the one-time purchase. And then there's the recurring type. This could be a subscription model or membership type model. Um, and, and so some questions you could ask here are, for what value are your customers really willing to pay? 
for what do they currently pay if you have an existing business and how are they currently paying? How much does each revenue stream contribute to the overall revenues of the business? And that's a, that's a key important uh, phrase, right? So uh, it's the more revenue streams a, a business model has, the better off it typically is, right? And so you can you can generate different different revenue streams depending on the type of business. But as an example, if if you're uh, a product company, right? So you deliver the product, but perhaps in that product, you have some software or some membership or subscription model that once they have the product, so that's a purchase, that's one revenue stream. But then in order to get access to better features or, or, or uh, you know, a premium type of access, then they pay a, a monthly subscription fee. And so that, that would be an example of multiple revenue streams. Yeah, you don't want to have your all your eggs in one basket. Uh, in one basket. Um, when I was in business um, for three years, eighty percent of my revenues were coming from one company. So that, that that's a challenging, right? If I lose that customer, guess what? I'm out of business. So it is always to diversify your 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 revenue stream and and find ways to to get multiple ways of, of bringing revenues into the company. One, the question that is in here for what value are your customer really willing to pay is something that you need to explore because you want to avoid trying to compete on pricing. You don't want to be too low, right? And you don't want to be too high. But at the end of the day, if you're providing the right value proposition and you're fixing that, that uh, migraine, um, the customer perhaps is willing to pay a little bit more. So you need to explore that because that can affect how much money you're going to be bringing in and it will definitely affect your projection moving forward. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point, Rafael. And I think, so the, the, the higher the cost of your service, the, the higher the trust you're going to need to have and establish with your customer, right? And perhaps that'll affect your sales cycle as well. So uh, depending on the type of business that you're in, just know that it, it's almost, it correlates, it directly correlates, right? It's almost like a one line uh, chart yeah. where the higher the cost of your service of what you offer, the higher the trust you're going to need with your customers. So. Yeah. And let's say, let's say you're just starting, right? And you only have one revenue stream. That's okay. Don't panic. You have one revenue stream because again, when you take this digital fancy checklist which is the business model canvas and you go out there and you start engaging with your customer engaging with partners and people they're going to be providing you a lot of ideas right so perhaps you go out with one revenue stream and you when you come back with data and research and intelligence then then you'll be able to say you know what maybe i do have i do have multiple revenue streams here so let me make some adjustment to my plan so don't be disappointed or discouraged if you only have one revenue stream that's okay because at the end of the day, we still need to validate all this and explore and talk to the end user. So just go out there and, and, and start exploring the market. Yeah. And this is a great tool to use to, to test that, right? To test a new revenue model, uh, to test a new, a new business segment if you have an existing business. So definitely leverage tools like this because it'll help you get organized, but also save a lot of time and resources and in the process, right? Um, as they, they used to say, if you build it, they will come. Well, that's, that's, that's definitely not true. Right. And, and using some of these tools can help you demystify that, that, that concept. You want to find customers that are willing to pay for your services before, or while you start, you know, you have a, a minimum viable product as they call it. So, so on to the next slide, uh, the key resources. So now we're going to move to the left side of the canvas. And so key resources describes the most important assets required to make your, your business model work. And so some of the questions you can ask here are, what key resources does our value proposition require? Do our distribution channels require? Do our customer relationships require? And does our revenue streams require. So, so this, this is basically everything that could be either physical, financial, intellectual, or human capital. And so these can also be owned or leased by, by your company, or you can acquire them with, by your, from your key partners, which we'll talk in the next slide. Yeah. So, so we just left the right side of the, the canvas, which is um, 
dedicated to the customer. And now we are on the business side or in the business side of the canvas. So the key resources, the first thing you're going to hit, right? And so one of the things that I like to tell the companies, all right, so do you have a contractual agreement? Do you have a contract? Do you have an attorney? Do you have any intellectual property that you need to protect? Do you need to protect your trademark? Do you have copyright? Do you have an office space, equipment, right? If you're in the landscaping business, do you have the machines? Um, <clears throat> so these are things that you need to start writing down. And, and, and again, when you go out there, you may add some more to the list. You'll figure out that you need more equipment or you need less. So all the way from intellectual property, which are your, your, your idea, protecting your idea, your, copy, your copyright, trademark, to equipment, to offices. So this is the business side of things, okay? Absolutely. And so then we move on to the key activities. So this describes the most important things your, co your company must do to make the business model work. So some questions you can ask here are what activities does the business undertake in achieving the value proposition for the customer? Uh, what key activities do our value, does our value proposition require? Do our distribution channels require, customer relationships require, and revenue streams require? And so uh, these can be, you know, production, problem solving, platform, or a network. Um, some examples of, of this could be, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a consultant, the, 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 when you're actually consulting, right? Uh, this could be designing or, or uh, software development, web development, if that's the space that you're in. And so. Or something as basic is how are you going to promote it? How are you going to advertise you know, how are you going to network, right? Uh, what are the activities that you're going to be engaging for this value proposition to get to that customer segment? So something as simple as creating a business card, right? Uh, or, or attending a chamber of commerce event, right? So write those down and they all have a cost. So keep track of that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and if you're in, in the product space, then manufacturing would be one of your key activities, one of your most important key activities. Research and development could be a, a key activity as well. So. So let's move on to the okay. next box. Um, key yeah, partners. Let, one ahead, thing that I forgot to mention on the on the previous uh, slide with activities. Now, there are activities that could also be channels. So, and that's okay. So when you find yourself writing down the key activities and you're like, well, wait a minute, I already used that on their channels. That's okay. Or, or you say, or you may, wait a minute. I think that what I just wrote down could be a customer, right? That's okay. So keep that in mind that you can have, you can repeat the same activity or tactic in different boxes within the business model canvas. Yep. Good point. And so then we move on to key partnerships. This describes the network of suppliers and partners that make the business model work. So questions you can ask, who are your key partners? Who are your key suppliers? Which key resources are we acquiring from our partners? What key activities do our partners perform? And then some of the motivators for, for building your key partnerships is, you know, you want to optimize or, or economies to scale. You, you're ready to take your business to the next level. Or you want to reduce risk, which is which is really important in business, uh, or or you want to outsource particular resources or activities to reduce your 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 band to alleviate your bandwidth so you can do more. And yeah, and, so. and when you write this down, um, make sure that you you have established some sort of relationship with these partners, whether you have a memorandum of understanding or a teaming agreement or some type of connection. Make sure it's official. Don't just write things down just to write them down. Uh, a, a good start would be Veterans Florida, right? So that could be a key partner in the development of your business and business model, right? They can help you advertise. They can support you. They can help you promote. So they can elevate you and give you the credibility that is necessary for your business to start getting, getting traction out there in the, in the commercial side of things. BEI could be another partner. So these are just giving you an idea how you can start, right? Your supplier, your distributor could be a partner, right? You have a strategic partner. It can also be your channel. So keep that in mind. Make sure that you have some sort of a relationship with them. We have a local um, agency called FAWAP, right? That That's another partner for, for better-owned businesses. So don't 
don't think so hard sometimes something as simple as the people that are already helping you um, so yeah no that's a great point Rafael. and so let's move on to the to the last box uh, this is the the cost structures so this describes all the costs incurred to to operate the business model so the what are the most important costs inherent costs that uh, you have in your business model and how does it so how much does it cost to achieve the value proposition for your customer which key resources and key activities are most expensive and then you you, you have different types right you have your fixed cost variable costs and economies of scale yeah so uh, again you know we 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 don't want to make you think that this is very difficult at the end of the day is what are your expenses right and uh, before we were talking about key resources we talked about activities on the business side they all have a cost right so you can transfer those costs into this box on on, on the cost structure and figure out how much you're going to be how much do you need to operate every year right uh, and then before we talked about revenue streams on the right side of the of the of the business model canvas. So, at the end of the day, is am I making money? So when you make that, when you subtract the expenses from the revenue, are you there? And if you're not, then we need to explore why. And if you are, then great. Then how can we continue to scale this and and and, and continue to grow those margins, right? So keep that in mind. Yeah, that's a great point. So next, we're going to do a, a quick little case study and just apply what we've just learned about the, the different boxes into uh, uh, a little known company called Tex, uh, Tesla. And so we all know Tesla. I mean, it's, it's in the news almost every day. Um, but uh, let's, let's take a look at their business model canvas. 